towards visiting Mars. Yeah, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk speaking at the South by Southwest conference in Austin, Texas. Musk was asked what the first humans to travel to Mars will experience on the red planet. Difficult, dangerous, good chance you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> Excitement for those who survive. <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and uh, I think there's not many people who actually want to go in the beginning because all those things I said are true. Uh, but there'll be some uh, for those who survive. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> that was an ABC News coverage of Elon Musk at the South by Southwest tech conference last month. This may be a small detail, but some people may have perceived Musk's attitude towards death as boorish or out of touch. There may not be a noble cause that exists where the loss of life should be taken lightly, and I think Musk feels the same way. We need to remember that he's been addressing this matter for at least two years, and it's naturally a mundane experience to repeat the same message over and over again. And it's hard to humanize a concept or an idea. So I believe when the time actually comes to send colonists to Mars, the attitude will be much different. But before we dive into this deeper, let's go into what's happening with the Big Falcon rocket, the space launch vehicle that will take the colonists to Mars. SpaceX, along with the ULA, Blue Origin, and Orbital ATK are all competing for funding from the U.S. Air Force, who wants a new vehicle to launch their classified payloads by 2022. The reason being is that they don't want to use ULA's Atlas V rocket anymore because the rocket uses the Russian-made RD-180 engine, and the Air Force will likely fund a substantial portion of the development costs of three out of the four launch vehicles proposed by the competing companies. As recently reported by Spacenews.com, the U.S. Air Force is scheduled to make launch service agreement awards in July of this year, so we'll know in about three months whether or not SpaceX will receive additional funding for the BFR. This award will accelerate the development of the BFR because SpaceX would be contractually obligated to do so since the Air Force must stop using the Atlas V by 2022. But regardless whether or not SpaceX receives funding, they are pouring all of their resources to the development of the BFR. Meanwhile, SpaceX has been working with the Port of Los Angeles to acquire and develop a vacant 18-acre lot at Berth 240 located at Terminal Island. They want to build an over 18,000 square meter facility on the lot and in order to make room for this massive facility, they will have to tear down this old pumping station first. Here's a close up of the lot. According to Business Insider, the facility will take up roughly the area of this red rectangle and there will be parking spaces for 438 cars. This will likely be the site where the BFR will be manufactured as it needs to be close to the water so it can be shipped to the launch site near Brownsville, Texas. SpaceX senior communication manager James Gleason said that the launch site in Texas is targeted to be operational before the end of 2018. With the developments with the manufacturing facility on Terminal Island in LA and the launch site in Texas, the pieces are rapidly falling in place for us to see the test launch of the BFR spaceship in 2019. We will have to wait to see how things play out. The development of the BFR and the campaign to colonize Mars will be one of the most important undertakings of our generation. SpaceX's role will be to provide transportation and ensure the basic infrastructure for propellant production and survival is in place. There will likely be many other entities involved with the precise focus and vigorous commitment to the well-being of the colonists. When the time actually arrives, it will be easier to humanize this endeavor. Hopefully in 15 to 20 years, the first group of colonists will board the SpaceX Big Falcon rocket and embark on an 80-day journey to the fourth planet from the sun. The colonists will graze the surface of Mars. Their steps will imprint the fine coppery red regolith. Behind round visors, they will gaze at the bouldered, jagged landscape washed in red hues from the dusty Martian atmosphere. An atmosphere so thin and cold, silence will surround them except for the sounds of muffled communications of their fellow colonists and sounds of the interworkings of their spacesuits. 
The true feeling of what this moment will be like escapes our imagination. It's a moment reserved for the colonists of Mars. The moment they realize that they are gazing at their new home. These colonists will be thinking and feeling human beings like you and I. They will have homes, friends, and family that they leave behind. They will have names and faces that the world will come to know leading up to their grand send-off to the Red Planet. Off to the great, lifelong mission to make humanity a multi-planetary species. Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neoscribe, and I'll see you on the next journey. Hey guys, this was a very tricky script to write this week. There was so much of the script that I left out, and that was tough to do because I spent a lot of time and research writing it. Anyway, in the end, I felt it was important to highlight the fact that the colonists will be materialized as human beings someday. And I cannot wait to cover every little detail leading up to the first mission to Mars and eventually the colonization of the Red Planet in the years to come. And if you connect with my content and want to support this channel, you can check out my Patreon page in the description below. You can pledge as little as a dollar a video, every bit helps. Thank you all so much and I'll see you on the next journey.